Guys, we are in the middle of a revolution in digital paint mixing. We've got Mixbox being integrated into RebL5. We've got OK Lab as a gradient space in Photoshop. And we've got Focal Paint, which is an iPad app being developed by Brian Dieterle, who's kindly agreed to talk about it on this channel. Brian, thank you. Hey, no problem. Brian, what was the inspiration for creating an app that simulated subtractive mixing? It started when I was on um, the MyPaint forums, which is an open open source painting software. Anna Tim had made a, uh, a patch to that MyPaint software that did real color blending, but there was some problems with it and it kind of got me on this rabbit hole. And I went down to like Scott Burns' website with a bunch of information about spectral reflectance recovery and mixing colors in RGB. RGB versus the spectral reflectance model. That was actually something I wanted to ask, which is how did you model the spectral reflectance curves of pigments in the computer? It's got a long history. Uh, this technique is called reflectance recovery. And there's there's libraries out there, like with co the Color Science Python library, they have built in the functions like by Meng, Brian Smith's back in 19, the 90s. Scott Burns created his own. They all basically just crunch numbers until you get the color that you want, and then with a from a curve that is usually smooth. If it's right. smooth, it's going to be more or less natural, like you would see in the real world. In the app, you call these reflectance curves waveforms. I mean, I'm not a physicist, but a uh, waveform is just like the shape of the of the color as far as the spectral wavelengths. So normal RGB mixing, if you say mix together an indigo blue and a yellow, you get gray, but with paint, you get a green. So, you know, you moved from three channels, RGB, to 12 channels to get this effect. Is there any reason you chose the number 12 specifically? Not specifically, but I knew that I could handle 12 as far as memory. And I know more is better. So I thought, you know, eight works pretty well too, but 12 also works. So let's go with that. Yeah. There's a reason why more is better. Fortunately, it's basically the same math as doing regular um, mixing, mm -hmm. except now instead of one texture it's got four textures involved so it'd be like kind of like having four layers in your photoshop you'd have that additional overhead like four layers instead of one layer okay finally we've got to talk about the fact that the user in focal paint can actually edit the waveform to create like spectral profiles of pigments that don't exist or can't exist in the real world what do you imagine are some of the advantages uh, to the artist um you can create a unique color that mixes differently than anything else. Uh, maybe it's bizarre, maybe it's broken, but maybe it's also unique. This kind of makes me think about metamorism. It might actually be a great way to teach that concept. Get a digital graphic design student and say, find three different ways to create the same brown with totally different waveforms. That's right, yeah, metamers. Um, yeah, colors that look the same that have different compositions. You wouldn't be able to do that if you couldn't uh, either edit the waveform or produce them you know, on the fly. And most of these techniques involve sam having your original um, RGB samples upsampled. So you have like your stat static red, a static green, a static blue, and you just kind of sum them together to get your, your spectral upsampled color. If you do that, you don't have any metamers because they're all coming from those, right. those three primaries still. One thing you can actually do with that is simulate like lasers. What happens when you mix those together in uh, focal paint? Since you can edit this, the waveform now, um, you can make these, you know, single band colors. And it was a surprise to me because I hadn't actually fiddled with this, but if you make a single band color, like even if it's red and you pick a, a next door band, which is also red, um, and you try to mix those two together, you'll get this horrible black color. Right. You know, the other thing this reminds me of is this thought experiment done by Herbert Ives back in the 1930s, who was kind of the reverse. He said, what if we had pigments that reflected the whole spectrum, except for one tiny piece, thinking again, subtractively, if they're all starting from a high reflectance, they'd be like this reverse laser. They'd have one dip in one part of the spectrum. He theorized that you could mix these pigments together to get like really bright secondary and tertiary colors out of it, but he didn't have the uh, ability to test that idea. I feel like now we do. I actually haven't tried that yet. That might I've be something to, worth playing with. <laughs> try the, I tried shapes with a with a spike, but not a not okay. a not a valley like you just described. So that's I'd be very curious to see what happens. <laughs>
All right, so listen, guys, if you want to check out Focal Paint, you can uh, test drive it. You can join the beta. That's correct, right? Correct. Um, if, you, if you have an iPad with the latest graphics chip, and what do you have to download? Test Flight? Yep, Test Flight. And then and you, click the link on focalpaint.com or in Twitter at Focal Paint app. If nothing else, I hope this uh, video can drive a few more users toward that and you can get some good feedback on it. Thank you so much for dropping in and talk about this. This was awesome. Awesome. <laughs>